Hello everyone, my name's Julian. I'm gonna be doing this pixel paint tutorial today of the dragon hatchling. We're gonna use Photoshop and After Effects and I'd say it's a beginner tutorial, but we will do some harder stuff later, but don't worry, we'll be fine. I'll take you for it. But before we get started, let's have a quick look at what we'll be making. Let's begin. Crack open Photoshop. You're going to want to go to the top left corner, File, New, and you're going to want to set your file at 1920 by 1080 p Put that resolution checkbox to 72. Some of you might have it at 300, that's for print. We don't need that. That will, that will make your file much bigger than it needs to be. And your bit rate should be at 8 bit as well. Right, I'm going to make a couple of new layers. They're going to be blank. I'm going to want those separated from the background because we're going to need to move things around later and uh, we just don't want to have to cut the egg out at the end of it and then fill in the background so let's be organized. We're going to use the marquee selection tool which is in the toolbar. Um, yours might not be set to a circle like mine is but you just hold down on it and drag to the bottom right corner of that box you'll get an option to change the shape. So. You're going to want to hit, hit the circle one and if you go onto your uh, desktop and you sort of hold shift and drag you'll actually have a nice perfect circle which is a great start what i'm going to now do is open up a nice image reference uh, that's something that sort of really emulates the lighting that i want for the egg and i photographed this marble on a black surface it's really moody so it's some it's a really good starting point to base the whole scene on. This is also on the Deviant Art page. You're more than welcome to download this photo and uh, use it for your own reference. That's fine. So I've imported that and just put it on its own layer. Now there's something I actually like about this marble. It's sort of a bit transparent, slightly cloudy and smoky. And it had a color that I liked and uh, so I decided to actually use the color palette that it has. So I'm actually eye dropping which is if you just hold the I key, you can change your tool to an eyedrop tool, which will pick up the color of where you click on the photo. And then it instantly, as you release I, you can press B and go to brush, and you can immediately brush that exact same color over to wherever your selected area is. In this case, our little sphere area. So. It's quite a fluid workflow, so you, I'm just bouncing back and forth, uh, where the sh clicking where the shadow is for the shadow and transferring it to my ball, and same for the highlights. And you can see that it's starting to look quite similar. Mine's a bit more of a matte kind of finish, but I think the color scheme's there, and that's really what I wanted to get from it. I'm just going to increase the speed of the footage now, just because it's going to get a bit repetitive here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly create a shadow and I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to obviously create more of an ellipse. Um, we're going to want to blur the shadow so that it matches the photo reference and it needs to be on a separate layer because if it was with the original ball we've drawn it would blur everything including the ball so we're going to need to deselect it so you can hit Control d or command d or you can go to the select menu at the top uh, and then go to click deselect um, but i prefer the shortcut then we're going to go over to the blur part so with that shadowy layer selected we're going to click filter and then we're going to go over to blur you will see the gaussian blur um, and then if you click that sort of slider that will appear and the more to the right it will blur it more and the more to the left it will basically take it back to how it was and the next part of this I'm just gonna basically create some sort of background so I'm gonna create another new layer and this will sit below the shadow and below the uh, and I'm just literally just gonna eye drop some of the original photo and just I don't know if you noticed but towards the, the closer it gets towards the camera and the shot 
it gets darker and the further away it gets darker as well there's like a almost like a spotlight on the marble so I'm just copying that because I want that sort of lighting so using the soft brush I've just swiped across quickly just to create you know a bit of ambience and yeah I'm quite happy with how that's looking I'm just taking a bit of the pink hue that's off of the sphere that we've created because that's what would happen the light would bounce around and you know it kind of there's a bit of reflectivity going on so yeah I'm just kind of balancing the values a bit So at this point, I'm, I think I'm going to just boost the contrast of the background. Um, I had this idea that this egg is sitting inside a cave. And I think just by warming up the environment, it sort of feels a bit more realistic. That's kind of warmth is what eggs need to sort of grow and hatch. And so it kind of makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to edit, which is in the top left corner. Scroll down, transform. Um, I'm going to go to free transform and we're going to just pull the bounding box up to stretch it into an egg form and then you just want to hit go over to the arrow um, just to change tool and then a little box of the pit will appear and it'll ask you to click apply or cancel and you just want to apply that so now what I want to do is I want to add a sort of roughness sort of organic feeling to this surface of this so I think we need some textures and I've got some textures in my little library I'm not advocating everybody going off on Google and stealing other people's photography so if you don't want to be a, a thief you can go onto my DeviantArt page and borrow my ones I will sometimes duplicate a layer um, I've done my egg in this instance just in case I want to go back and I'll just hide that layer with the eye toggle that exists in the layer tabs. Right, so let's bring that texture in. So once you've got your project folder open with your texture, um, or it might be on your desktop or whatever, uh, you just drag it into Photoshop with the new layer that you've created for this texture. Um, you're going to probably get a bounding box with a cross going through and it might not be the size that you actually want it to be so just resize it it's a good chance to do that and you're gonna to want to make it probably bigger than the egg at this stage it's probably a smart object so you're gonna go over to the arrow tool on the top left toolbar which it, well it is on my screen anyway and then it's gonna give you a menu to choose to place or cancel or don't place we're just gonna click place so right now it's going to be a, in a smart object sort of form. Um, we don't want that because we can't actually change the shape of it as a smart object. So if you right click the layer, you'll have a load of boxes appear, a load of options. Um, we're going to want to rasterize the layer, but the purpose of this is to mainly just allow us to edit this layer in any way. So I'm going to quickly introduce you guys to the transfer modes tabs so we're going to use one called soft light and that exists in the layer tab and if you just go above where all your layers are you'll see a bunch of menus and yours will probably say normal um, or multiply if you've already got that activated but you want to click your layer and then you want to apply that specific transfer mode to that layer and in this case it's the texture so we want our textures to sort of be partially transparent and just throw all of that roughness on top of our egg. So just click that transfer mode tab and then click soft light. Right, so this is actually one of the cool bits. So we're gonna go over to edit uh, with that texture layer selected and you're gonna go over to transform. Now you're gonna get a couple of different options here. What we want is the warp transformation. And you're gonna get this bounding box appear and this one looks a bit weird. It's got all these sort of handles around it but they're actually awesome. You can actually pull them around so just give that a go and if you click one of them you'll notice these two little levers will appear and they're like lines with circle dots on them um, and you can actually pull those to sort of steer the curvature of uh, of the net so yeah and I think you know where this is going so you're just gonna pull those levers around and shape it into a sort of nice egg shape 
It's pretty easy. I don't think it's uh, too challenging. However, it might be quite difficult if your uh, texture is not as flat as the one I'm using. So when you're satisfied with the shape, you just go over and click that arrow tool and um, it will give you the menu to apply the transformation, which you'll want to. So we're going to do some more modifications to this texture, but I'm actually showing this to you guys because it's quite an important technique for getting a lot of variance out of one texture. So with the texture layer selected as soft light, if you go over to image adjustments and in that top drop down menu, you can select levels or you can just press control L and command L for a Mac, I think. And what this tool does is it will allow you to change the, the, the whites, the blacks and the midtones. So all of those little dark blemishes will be greatly affected by this and the highlights will actually uh, but this isn't a this effect won't have the exact same result for all of the other transfer modes but it will definitely change them so by all means experiment but yeah if you look at how I drag the slider up and down it's it goes from being really subtle to quite harsh so just find that sweet spot that you like and what you can do is you can even just erase out the edge of the texture or, you know, I don't actually commit to this, but I've just shown you guys, you can just smooth out areas. You don't, it doesn't have to be constantly blemished. So as the video continues, I'm just throwing more textures on using the exact same techniques I've just shown you. I'm just going to whiz through this because it's just repetitive. Honestly, guys, I'm being quite conservative with the textures I'm using. You could do something much more creative than what I've done here. You could put things like snail shells, um, tree bark, grass, your friend's tongue, dog's fur, elephant skin, leopard print, tiger stripes, you name it. And yeah, I'm quite happy with how it's looking. It's definitely looking like an, an organic version of that original picture that I captured. But again, it doesn't look very menacing. And to be honest, it looks, like dinner like I definitely have that for an omelet so yeah so join me for part two and we're gonna make this a look a bit more menacing and reptilian and um, we're gonna sort of customize the texture a bit more than we've done in this we're actually gonna get our hands on and do some painting so yeah feel free to follow along if you've got like no interest whatsoever in making an egg in the way that I made it and you hate Photoshop I don't know why you're watching this video, but I've got some sample eggs here that I've modeled in ZBrush and yeah, have a look at these and you can drag in these into a After Effects document or Photoshop document and do some really quick customizations and that sort of thing. The eggs can be found on the DeviantArt page and I'll have a link to that in the tab below the video. Uh, just go to the info tab and yeah, you can find all the other resources there as well. Please comment, leave any feedback. I'll try my best to answer your questions and, and don't forget to subscribe.